Hi, tea timers. Okay, so don't fall over in a dead faint, <laughs> but today I'm not drinking my usual. You know how I always have like teas that have black tea or green tea or Darjeeling or today I decided I was going to mix it up <laughs> and I'm doing a um, cranberry pomegranate and this is the first time I've ever tried it. See? Because um, I'm not usually like a fruity tea person, but I just felt like trying something different because as I was looking at all my teas, I thought, oh dear, you guys might, um, you know, be getting boring of the same old tea. So um, here we go. It's, it's good. <laughs> it's funny. It doesn't quite seem like tea to me without that, um, without that, <laughs> that caffeine kick. Um, but, it, but it's good. It's, it's a nice warm drink. So, and I wonder though, if maybe some of you drink this a lot, if the tea, the red in it is going to make my teeth red, my mouth, like my tongue, like, you know, when you drink a, eat a cherry lifesaver. Anyway, we don't know. We don't know. Inquiring minds. And there's a hint of something else in there too. On the back palette. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, Lady Nee Swearingen? Uh, I, it's not that the name's weird. It's so I can't read. I can't read my writing. Um, she said, I'm working my way through your videos. Yay! <laughs> so I'm not sure if you ever talked about this, but can we discuss your beautiful hair? It may not be a topic for your male viewers, but I'm 10 months into ditching the dye and wonder, A, when you decided to stop coloring your hair, and B, if you ever thought about coloring it again. You look wonderful. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> I, um, my hair, oh my gosh, I almost, okay, we're talking about the dye, but I almost cut my hair this weekend. My friend cut her hair. What she did is she combed it forward and she cut it this way. And then she had her husband cut it like, cut the back part around this way so that it would match up. And it looks super cute because she's, both of my friends who cut their own hair and had their husbands do it, it, yes, it ended up way shorter than when they first started cutting, but they both have curly hair. So it looks kind of chic French, but I'm just worried if I just cut mine. First of all, my I have, I am not talented in the craftsy things. Um, I'm like, just not. And the way our dog looks, I get a little bit nervous. So I've been doing this, but I'm, I might cut it. I might do it. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, that's not what you asked. You asked about the color. So I'd always let my hair go gray. When I was, I got my first gray hair when my first baby was born at 24. And then it just happened and I got streaks. So I have like streaks of gray and then I got more gray and I was just letting it grow out. And then Jen and I went to a spa one time and then they said, oh, let us put low lights in. I didn't know what that was. So they did that and it, it looked pretty. Um, and she said it could grow out and I was able to do, but then I went to get touch-ups and the guy just did it like, just not with where the color was. Um, and so then when it was growing out, it looked like a sweater that had been slightly like jiggity jaggedy. But then I was like, oh, well, so I had to keep on doing that. And that was around when I was, that started around when I was mm, almost 50. And then I went to do Bond Girls and I had a bit of low lights, but a lot of my gray showing through and they wanted to color it because my character is supposed to be in her forties and she was actually, I was actually in my fifties, <laughs> 51 or two or something like that. So, um, so they colored it. And, but I found that we had to color it, uh, different from the low lights. We, ha I'd had to be colored every three weeks, every two weeks, it would start growing out so that there would, it would look not good. And, um, my hair is, they had dyed, it was dyed dark. So every two at, at two weeks, then they would put like a little dye color in. And then at three weeks, I would have to go and get it done again. And it kind of burned on my scalp. And they said, oh, you have a sensitivity to it. And then I met a woman in a beauty parlor who was one of the um, women at the desk. She had sensitivity where it kind of burned her scalp. And then all of a sudden one day she did it and she said she became like the elephant 
man, where she got her whole head swelled up and her ears, everything swelled up and she had to be raced to the hospital. And I thought, oh my goodness, what if I'm like, I have sensitivity. What if that's, oh my goodness. And so then that was a really good excuse. So when I finished Bomb Girls, then what I did is I grew it out for three months and then I cut it really short and then I let that grow out. And so I don't know that I would do it again. I think if somebody wanted me to do something and they needed me to have dark hair, then I'd just probably wear a wig because first of all, it's hours in the chair. Men, you maybe don't know this, but it's hours in the chair. Second of all, like, and those are hours you don't get back out of your life. And second of all, you know, women are expected to do all these things like buy all these fancy makeups and the clothes, you know, for a black tie event, a woman is supposed to have a new gown all the time, whereas a guy can wear the same old tux. And women, you know, a lot of women, you know, they don't get paid as much as men, but they, there's all these things that you're supposed to do. And those haircuts and those hair dyes, I mean, that <laughs> ran into a lot of money. So, you know, I, I don't know. I think things are um, different for, for women. And I think if you don't want to, who's to say? But I do get some flack from people. People are like, oh, it looks like you've let yourself go. Oh, it doesn't. But I, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay too. Like, I, I'm really happy not to spend the time. And now, oh my goodness. So yeah, if you're thinking about growing out your hair, might as well do it while we're in a pandemic and nobody's gonna see you anyway. You don't have to have that awkward period in between where you're growing it out and wearing hats. And it's very, very freeing. So I'm very happy about it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not quite so happy about how my hair is getting <laughs> like really so long. Okay, um, oh, Pamela, she told me how to say it, um, day, Dejar Dean, 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 J. Dar Dean. <laughs> um, she wanted to know if um, Susan signed the books. Yes, she did. She signed all the books. I have one here that I just finished. So she signed and she wrote, so it um, here it says um, to Meg and it says the name is Call Me Irresistible and she said, call you irresistible. And then she said, it's never too late to make a new friend heart Susan. So yeah, she signed them all and she signed them differently. And I finished this book. It's really fun. And actually, I'm really glad she sent it because I, when you read about it and it, there's on a golf course and stuff and I'm like, oh, I don't really play golf. Well, so, you know, I might not have picked it up, but it, it's really good. It was really fun. So yes, she signed all of them and each one different. So let's see what else we've got. Lots of questions to go through. Oh, uh, Giovanni, hey Meg, when you and your sisters were teens, what's something you guys would love to do together? Also, just bought your book, Solace Island. Such a great read. Ah, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for getting my book and, and I'm really glad you enjoyed it. So let's see, one of the things, well, well, when we were teenagers, then it was more like what, uh, what we like to do is shop. We love to shop. I used to love to shop until I married somebody and then we had a lot of debt and then I couldn't afford to shop. And then shopping was scary for me. Like it's funny, before that, that was my fun thing to do. My sisters and I would go, we couldn't shop all the time, but what we'd do is we'd save up our money for the after Christmas sales. Because in the old days, listen, kiddles. <laughs> but in the old days, the after Christmas sales were amazing. So you could go to the fashionable stores that all the other kids could buy, or not all the other kids, but a lot of them could shop at all the time. And you could get things. And the after Christmas sales, something might be 75, 80% off the list price. And um, that was amazing. So we would save up all our money up until Christmas for the after Christmas sales. And then we would go and we would be able to buy so many things and then afterwards we'd try them all on and tromp around in our bedrooms and show each other our outfits and ooh ah and it was so so much fun and we'd get our entire year's wardrobe at the after christmas sales so that was really really good we liked doing that and um let's see what what other thing we like doing a lot of things we sang uh christmas time we always sang a lot like actually throughout the year we sang a lot and sang harmonies and stuff like that that always made us happy um 
Let's see, I'll do that one next time because that might be a little bit of a longer one. Let's see, oh, okay, Erica D from France. Uh, you are such a grand storyteller. Since it's spooky season, have you had any ghost exper ghostly experiences? Oh, <laughs> yes, I have actually. I've had quite a few. Um, I'm lucky because um, generally I don't see, but I can just feel. So like when we were shooting Masquerade in the Hamptons, there was, th okay, this isn't a cozy story, but it's kind of interesting and it is going to be Halloween. So ooh, maybe I should turn off the lights and make it spooky. But um, yeah, so we were shooting Masquerade and we were shooting in this big mansion in the Hamptons and it was right on the beach. And I remember walking with some of the, uh, I can't remember, cast or crew. And they're like, I love this house. Oh my God, I love this house. And I was like, I don't. And they're like, oh, come on. How could you not love this house? And I said, I, I don't, it, it has a bad feeling. They're like, that's crazy. If somebody offered you this house, if somebody offered you this house for free, I bet you would take it. And I, cause I said, I, I wouldn't live here. And I said, uh, if they offered it to me and they said, yeah, if somebody offered it to you, you would take it. You would want to live here. And I said, would I be able to sell it? And they said, no, you'd have to live here. And I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it. And they're like, that's crazy. You wouldn't take it. This is a multi, multi-million dollar house. It was a big mansion and it had, a, you know, it was really, it was outwardly beautiful. And I just said, I just, I wouldn't be able to live here. And then um, we were shooting in the living room. And I remember there was a scene that I did with, um, oh gosh, the name's flown out of my head. It'll come to me later. But we were doing a scene and we had to shoot that seen three times because there kept being a quote hair in the gate where there were flickers in the living room and um and so they would have to shoot it again and then you know people like what happened and then they would go to the dailies and they would see flickering in in the film and so we'd have to come back again and they started getting like the camera crew was getting sweaty and like nervous and <sighs> making sure to blow out the gate in between every single shot um but that that's what happened and then after we did all the stuff in the main area, we moved up to the master bedroom where Rob Lowe and I have, you know, our scenes of intimacy. And we were in that room for three days. And I, I, you know, get ready and I go in and it's like this wall hits me. And I said, something really bad happened in this room. Something really bad, I could just feel it. And I was really like, I was shaky and they're like, don't I say, I said, can, can we, can we, and I was, I didn't know, I was just, maybe we can, can we shoot maybe in a different bedroom? There's lots of bedrooms in this house. Why don't, why don't we shoot in a different bedroom? Cause I, the room really scared me. And they were like, no, that's ridiculous. This is a master bedroom. And so I did, but every day, like, I just felt like I could just feel these like waves bombarding me. And then at the end of the day, when they finally said cut, I would run into the master bathroom and shut the door and I would find myself like dry heaving over the toilet. Like I had to throw up, like just hunkered over that I remember it, the master bathrooms, they weren't as big back in those days, but there was like a, uh, sh the, the, the place where the, the sink was here and the shower was here. And then there was a, the toilet was right by the window. And I just remember like, you know, I'd lock the door and just trying to do it quietly, but I felt like I had to throw up three days, all three days and had a blinding headache the entire time we shot. And I, I kept on saying something bad happened in this room, something really bad happened in this room. And people were getting, you know, the director was getting a little grouchy. And when we finished, um, I remember he um, pulled me aside and he said, I, really, I don't appreciate it. And I said, appreciate what? And he goes, how you were trying to freak everybody out. I'm like, I wasn't trying to freak everybody out. And he goes, who told you? And I said, told me what? Told me what? I don't know what you're talking about. He said, the reason we got to shoot in this house for so inexpensive was there was a murder-suicide here and um, recently. And, uh, you know, so that's how we got to shoot here. <laughs> I was like, okay, that explains it. But I just knew something really bad had happened. But I didn't see a ghost. I just, I just felt it. So that's, that's all. I just noticed. Look, this is a. I you might say like, oh, Meg's all fancy because um, Jen gave me this. 
she she made it she created it for my 60th birthday and it's got all sparklies on this side and then on this side she wrote like a kind of a wishes for the next my next decade like a blessing and there's a little beautiful little stone here too so I'm wearing it today to say hi and anything like that so hi everybody so that's a little bit of a ghostly story it's not that actually ghostly but a little bit so I guess that should be it because I think we're pretty much wrapped up so everybody I'll see you um day after tomorrow and hope you have a wonderful day bye bye